uh, thanks Navneet for your question. So, uh, what Navneet and uh, like Sumit uh, asked, sorry, Navneet asked me was, uh, what was the purpose of the weight equals to yes variable once again? So basically, I'll just re reiterate on it once that it ensures the syn uh, synchronous execution of the uh, of a code. Now, what he asked me was that what if it's not there? Now, this when you are submitting codes in a server, right? It might be that you are submitting you submitted a code A and that in the process of execution, and then you execute another code. You start executing another code without yes. The way it equals to yes option, one code may get terminated halfway and the second might turn operating. So, however, to prevent that, it's a data control which you put in over there weight equals to yes. So, the default value that weight takes is or without even weight equals to yes, it would be uh, like a synchronous execution. So, however, we just generally mention that weight equals to yes option to ensure that the data controls are in place. So when you are writing an industry code in an industry, you just do not write the code, but there are certain governance and data like code control and governance and audit processes. So they look for these things and this weight equals to yes option being there, it documents the fact that yes, the codes have been executed in a synchronous fashion. So I might come back to you say six months down the line after you have submitted a model and come back and tell you boss what is the guarantee that the codes have been run one one after the other and not and there have been no termination or disruption in between so the fact that the code contains a weight equals to yes option very well implies that this particular uh, that the codes have been executed in a synchronous fashion it specifically prevents multiple execution of codes at one point of time so only once after a particular code has been executed would the next start. So that is where your R submit weight equals to yes option ka importance comes in. So that's a very specific data control that needs to be there. Even without it, you can write it and the same thing would operate. But yes, it needs to be there for some uh, like governance controls. Now, I believe the other option that you have with weight equals to yes is uh, weight equals to no. However, I have not tried out with uh, weight equals to no ever. I did not dare to. But yes, this is the option that uh, actually helps you or it ensures that your codes would be executed in a synchronous fashion one after the other. So that was a question that came up from Navneet. So I'm very sure that as we proceed, we would be getting up more questions which we could take up at that point of time. Okay. So now coming to the next part, uh, data extraction in SAS. So as I say, data extraction in SAS or from an internal database can be as simple as copying a data set or backing up a data set from one library to another to as complicated as creating merging uh, different data sets and getting a master database out of it. So there are a lot of way to do it. And the basic essence of data extraction in SAS involves creating a data set in SAS itself. And of creating new data sets in SAS from existing data sets. So, and a data set in SAS is created using a data step. So, a data step is a set of commands which is used to create a new data set. Now, there are some very specific or there are some very important components of our data step. So, the first is uh, in a data step, or the way the data step actually proceeds. So, the way actually your data step proceeds, it would be that you have of, uh, so it begins with specifying the name and location of the data set that is to be created. That is the destination data set. 
the data set that I want to create and the location where I want to create that particular data set. Second, the specification of the name and location of the source file from where the data set is to be created. That is the set statement. So the data statement in the data step specifies the name and location of the data set that is to be created. And the set statement specifies the specification of the name and location of the source file from where the data set is to be created. Right? Then it talks about specification of any change that is that needs to be made in the data set. Now when I'm talking about changing any changes in the data set, I'm essentially referring to changing the format of some variables changing or creating a new one or more new variables in the data set, changing the number of observation of the variables in the final data, and as well as renaming, keeping, dropping some variables or create a new set of variables or a subset of variables from the original data set. Right. So initially we would start off with a very simple example of data extraction in SAS within the internal database. So when I'm talking about this, uh, what I what I would start off with is extracting a data set from one library to another. And this is a very simple exercise and anyone in the session, everyone knows how to do this. So what you see is, uh, Just a moment, I'll just run this stack library. I forgot to run this. Just a moment, guys. So I would be using stack throughout as my user defined library. And I would be using uh, the SAS help as one of my reference libraries. So let's start off with the first and the most easiest part of it. That is copying a data set from one library to another. So if I go to SAS help, there is this data set called a GNP data set. So over here, I have a data set which has, so I have a data set which has the date variable and information on some GDP components, right? Now what I want to do is I just want to copy this in my folder. And while copying it, I do not like this date format as 1960Q1, 1960Q2. What I'll do is I just want to change the way the date variable appears in my data set. So that is where what I would be doing is I would be changing the format of the date variable. These are the two very simple things that I'm going to do. I'm just copying data set uh, GNP from SASL to my library stack. And while doing that, I'm just formatting the date variable. So obviously what you get to see is that so while I run this code, so just let's go back to the log and see what has happened. So it says that there are 126 observations read from the data set sasserv.gnp and a new data set stat.gnp has been created which has 126 observations and six variables. So what I have done is I've simply just copied the data set from this library uh, GNP, I mean stat, SASL, to the library stat. And this data set GNP contains the date in a different format. So what I had done is I had specified the date nine format. So I wanted this date variable to be formatted as date nine. So Date 9 format is nothing but a format where it's written as the date, the month and the year in four years. So it's like, and 9 stands for the length of this entire thing. So it, it has 0, 1, 
five and four nine characters all together. So this is known as the date nine format. So this is a very simple exercise where I'm just copying one library from one library to another. And I'm pretty sure the question that goes that is going on in your mind is what is this consultant talking about? I just know this simple thing. But when I'm talking about this particular as a simple copying exercise from one library to another, there is a deeper meaning to it. It has a deeper meaning in the sense that, please, uh, please excuse me for a moment, please. I have an urgent call coming up. Sorry, guys. Yeah. So when I'm saying that I'm just copying our data set from Navneet coming to your question in a moment. Now, <clears throat> so what I'm trying to do over here is I'm just trying to copy this data set SASL from this library, SASL library to my data set, the stat library. And I see that that gets copied. Now, why am I doing this copying exercise? So where would I need this in the industry? In industry, uh, as I have been talking about data governance procedures, so this code actually plays a very critical role because whenever you are working with any production data set or say the industry operates on a very approval basis, right? So when you are working for any big organization, there are a lot of approval structures. So basically, say suppose there is a data set A, which was there. Now I do two, three changes to that data set. Each of the changes get approved by the business. And I create a final data set, say B or say C. Now, C is my state of the art data set now. Now from C, I need to move ahead to make some other adjustments. Now what if, if those adjustments turn out to be uh, like if they tend to backfire. So what I need to do is in another folder, I just need to make a backup of this particular data set. So whenever say you have got a number of approvals, a number of adjustments approved, number of treatments on your data set approved and you create a data set. And that's a final data set as of that time. And then you work on it more and you create and you need to create the next level of the data set. So before you create that next level of the data set, you always need to keep this data set C, which was as of then, which was uh, the final data set as a backup. So that in case this adjustment backfires, you can always get back that uh, last final state of the data. So it's a very good coding habit to make this kind of a uh, copying exercise possible, right? So basically when we are doing this kind of a copying exercise, we tend to uh, keep back some very specific versions of final data sets, which can be retrieved if required later down the line, right? So basically suppose there is a variable say X, which gets changed later down or perhaps removed. And I want to get back to that X variable. Had I not kept back a backup of this data set, this would not have been possible, right? So this is the point from where we are actually coming up, right? So what we are trying to do over here is we are trying to create a backup of a given data set. So this function or this type of extraction, this very simple extraction process has a very important role to play as far as data governance procedures are concerned. So it's a very good coding habit to keep a backup of a data set while you go ahead and work with 
it in the future so that if required you can get back this state of the data set so that is it now coming to your question of neat so coming to this uh, coming to your question of neat uh, the library stat is access protected so will that not affect copying the data set so if this library was a read only access library i would not have been able to copy it but if you go up to this uh, if you go up you would see that libraries even though stat1 and stat is mapped to the same path they are with different alias names right it is the library stat1 which is access protected and not the library stat right so because i am providing this control exogenously and the folders themselves are not that folder them itself is not access protected the setting is not such that therefore when i am giving different alias names i can work with it had i done this for stat1 i would not be in a position to do it right okay so this is uh, so going ahead whenever you guys are working into your respective organizations and if you are working with sas keep this particular thing in mind right okay fine now uh, talking about now let's move to the next part of it so obviously what we have uh, seen is seen over here is that we are using data set to copy it back uh, to create a backup of the data set and all now often in interviews i have seen a particular question actually coming up that data sets or data sets can be created using data steps only true or false so obviously the answer is false because we are not only using data sets uh, we can create data sets not only using a data step but also a very specific proc step as well a procedure step as well so what exactly is the difference between a data step and a procedure step a data step within a data step what you are doing is you are actually creating different or you are creating a data set from another data set right and you are doing creating all kind of new variables observations rows columns and you are doing all kind of data preparation and data management but within a using a proc step you are executing procedures procedure like a linear regression which is a procedure you are using uh, logistic regression as a procedure you are doing time series as a procedure you are doing factor analysis as a procedure all kind of statistical and analytical procedures that we are doing however within those procedure steps there is another another step called the sql procedure which helps in compiling data set so the data management functions that you can do with data steps can largely be done using sql as well or structured query languages so uh, so basically the basic difference between a proc step and the data step is that using a data step we can create a data set a fresh data set from another data set right we can keep a uh, number of variables observation etc do merge appending etc now using sql we can do a large part of those as well as well as another advantage with the structured query language procedure is that it not only helps you compile up data sets but it also helps you compile up or summarize different statistical results together so that is where this role of this structured query language actually comes up so this structured query language is a procedure step which can also help in creating of a sas data set as well as summarize the data so so, <clears throat> so over here a proc step has to be like using a proc step you can simultaneously create a new data set as well as create summary measures within the data set simultaneously and this is what which makes the software so I mean, so appealing to the entire industry, and SQL procedure is often treated as an alternate to the data steps. Like SQL joins are an alternate to data step merge. Like creating new variables, uh, you can do it within SQL as well. You can just do a mean, median, 
or you can just find out the mean and assign a variable as mean and also you can do a lot of these steps which are you can hand pick variables within sql much easier compared to data steps and so on so data step has its own advantage sql has its own advantage but yes uh, both these parts uh, these functions are very critical for data extraction purposes so going down we would also be discussing about such data extraction procedures and such data extraction as well so 